Hi, and welcome back. Every now and then, a company manages to bring something unique to the market. Today, we'll take a deep dive with Granity from Clevis, the first ever granular filter. Granity has a 100% analog audio path and combines a regular multimode filter with a granular filter. This allows for anything from interesting subtle textures to unique sounds and effects like this and this and this and this If you like to support my videos or you want to get access to PDF sheets with hundreds of patch ideas I used in my videos, have a look at my Patreon. You can also support my channel through affiliate links in the video description. But now, let's dive right in. It helps to understand how Granity works in order to get the best results, but you can use the timeline if you prefer to jump to audio demos and patches first. Granity consists of two filters a classic multimode filter and a granular filter. Those two filters run in parallel and share the same audio input. So audio sent to this input is processed by both filters at the same time. And both filters share the frequency and resonance controls. However, there are separate outputs for the multimode filter, the granular filter, and there's also a mix output. This mix is controlled with this knob. It functions like a crossfader with just a multimode filter to the left and just a granular filter to the right. There's a CV input for the mix here as well. The classic filter controls are easy to understand. Beside the frequency cutoff slider, there's a CV input with a tenuverter and a 1V per octave input that can be used for tracking or of course as a second CV input. Beside the slider for the resonance, there's a CV input with attenuator. To set the mode for the multimode filter, you can use the push button here. There are two low pass filters, one high pass, a band pass and a band reject or notch filter. There's also an in mode which leaves the input signal unaltered. So you can easily use Granity as a regular multimode filter. Of course, the granular filter is the most exciting part. It shares the audio input and frequency and resonance controls with the regular filter. But it has a few more controls. To understand those, I need to visualize the core concept. The granular filter processes an audio input, for example this saw wave, and creates little chunks of sound, or in other words grains, by stepping through various filter variations. This happens in selectable structures, with variable length. For example, this pattern with three steps, which repeats itself. Because each of the steps or grains in a pattern sound a bit different, interesting effects are created when cycling through them. An important part of Granity is selecting the used structure, which is done with this control here. The number displayed shows the length of the pattern, from 2 to 8 steps. And the letter shows the variation. Just like anything on Granity, this can be controlled with the CV input here as well. You can just have fun and experiment with the structures, or you can have a look at the manual for more details or predictability. Here you see the available structures, 
which makes it possible to, for example, select a three-step low-pass variation or a five-step band-pass variation. At the end, you see a few random structures available as well. Without any additional signals, cycling through the grains happens with a frequency derived from the input. The granular engine detects upward zero crossings in the audio signal. With a simple saw wave like the one used in this example, that happens once per cycle on the black dots. This means the granular engine follows the same frequency as the input signal, and the grains have the same length as the input waveform. However, if you feed the module something like complex wavetables or folded signals, the grains can be triggered irregular or unpredictably, which is fun to explore as well. You can even feed the module things like chords or drum tracks, which might lead to interesting chaotic results. You can also use a separate signal to control the cycling of grains via the detect input. For example, with a different tuned oscillator. This can create interesting harmonics and effects. You can even use very slow signals like LFOs or sequencers to create patterns. On the module, you can see the audio input here is normal to the detect input. You can use this detect input directly to control the cycling with an external signal. Here is a simple saw wave with the grains following the audio and with an external oscillator. To add more depth to how the grains are cycled in regard to either the incoming audio signal or an external signal, there are a few controls. The first one is the divide setting. Instead of cycling with a frequency determined by the incoming signal, you can set a divide by 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, 16, 32, 64 and 128. Again, this has a CV input as well. Fast divisions create interesting harmonic ratios. While slow divisions create pattern-like effects. There are also two small controls here on the top. A track on or off switch and a phase or frequency control knob. These make the most sense when you use the granular filter with audio rates. With the track switch off, the phase control allows you to delay the cycling of grains. With the knob to the left, there is no additional delay. Turning the knob clockwise delays the cycling. This can create interesting phasing or flanger-like effects. With the track switch on, the frequency control allows you to detune the cycling frequency derived from the input signal with no detuning to the left, to a full octave above the incoming frequency. The ratio to the incoming signal is maintained, so this can lead to interesting detuned and virtual oscillator sounds, all still based on a single input. Let's tweak that frequency control. still divide the detuned frequency. Of course, the phase or frequency control has a CV input here as well. And finally, you can long press the mode button to invert the phase. Let's start by exploring Granity using a few variations of the same simple voice. Here is the Granity filter, with a simple saw wave oscillator at the input. The mix output is sent to a VCA. A sequencer is creating a melody and triggering a plucky envelope modulating the filter frequency. Tweaking the knobs on Granity is key to explore its sounds.
With this range of sounds, it's easy to modulate any parameter on GrainyD to add motion to a patch. For example, use an LFO to sweep the mix between the multimode and granular filter. Here's the same patch, but with slightly different settings. Here's the same setup, but this time the LFO is modulating the phase frequency input. The track switch is on, so in this case it's modulating the frequency. Here is the same patch with the track switch off, so in this case modulating the phase. Here, a looping envelope is modulating the division, and a synced CV sequencer is modulating the structure. This kind of modulation can easily bring out all sorts of glitchy effects. The mix knob can be used to add subtle textures to a classic sound, or go full out with the grains. Grainity has a fully analog audio path, with no stereo, blurring or reverb-like effects you might associate with digital granular processors. But applying some of those concepts in patches is still a lot of fun. Here you see the same setup as we started with, with Grainity used as the filter in a simple voice. This time though, the multimode filter output is sent through a VCA, and then an outboard mixer. This is used as the clean signal. The granular filter output is sent to a panner and the left and right output of the panner are sent through a stereo effects module. To add stereo spread to the granular sound, a copy or alternate waveform of the oscillator is sent to a clock divider and a division is sent to the detect input. A copy of the division is used to sync a second CV sequencer. This could also be something like a sample and hold module. That CV signal is used to modulate the panner. 
Of course, the effect could be all sorts of things like delays, reverbs or combos. Let's push grainy tea a bit further by feeding it more complex material and exploring the modulation. Here, two slightly detuned oscillators are mixed before passing through grainity and a VCA for volume control. A sequencer is tuning both oscillators and triggering a plucky envelope modulating the filter and VCA. Because the detect input isn't used, the combination of detuned oscillators create a rough beating structure of grains. Here's the same patch, but without modulation to the VCA. Also, the second oscillator is tuned above the other and has some slew applied to it. A copy of that output is sent to the detect input, creating a more stable effect. A copy of the sequencer's clock is sent to a divider and the slow division is modulating the divide input on grainity. This effectively switches between audio rate grains and grains with a slow pattern. This patch, a steady wavetable oscillator is used to feed grainity. A plucky envelope is opening the filter and the simple LFO is sweeping through the wavetable of the VCO, creating complex wave shapes.
Here, that wavetable oscillator is used in a simple voice. This time though, a square sub-octave output is sent to the detect input, creating more stable results. An LFO is added to modulate the filter frequency via the one volt per octave input. And another LFO is slowly modulating the mix. Finally, a slow division of a synced clock divider is modulating the divide input. A lot of interesting sounds can be achieved with tempo synced modulation. In this setup, two sine wave oscillators are sequenced and sent through a ring modulator before passing through granity. A simple plucky envelope is opening the filter, but a second rising envelope is triggered as well and modulating the mix. Depending on the structure and settings, this can create interesting transients, sonic shifts, or even delay like effects. In the next demo, I just tweak the attack time of the envelope modulating the mix. Here's the same patch, but again a copy of one of the oscillators is sent to the detect input to create a more stable effect. In most setups, tuning the small frequency and divide knob in detail is crucial. Also, the envelope modulating the filter is inverted using the onboard attenuverter, and thus in this case ducking the filter. Here's a similar setup as the previous patch, with a sequencer triggering two envelopes, one to the filter frequency and one to the mix. But only a single oscillator is used as the input, and a second oscillator is used only for the detect input. This oscillator is sequenced with a separate sequencer, synced to the first. The more you play around with granity, the more you realize you have to use and control it in a different way than regular filters. Here's the same patch, but again without inverted envelope to the filter frequency. An LFO modulating the frequency is added as well. This adds nice frequency drifts to the sound.
filters are great for audio processing and with all its special features, that's very true for GrainyD as well. Here is a simple example with a MIDI keyboard used to control an analog polysynth via MIDI. The audio of the synth is sent to GrainyD. Again, the multimode filter output is sent to an outboard mixer to create a clean signal. And the granular filter output is sent to a panner and then an outboard mixer. The panner is modulated with a free running sequence to create some random stereo spread. As always with GrainyD, experimenting and picking the right structure and settings is key. Once you have a setup like this, you can experiment and add a lot of modulation depth. Here, the 1V per octave output of the MIDI controller is used to tune a tuned oscillator. And that oscillator is sent to the detect input. The controller's mod wheel output is modulating the phase frequency control. And finally, the controller's gate output is used on an attack hold decay envelope. That envelope is controlling the speed of an LFO modulating the filter cutoff frequency. Here is nothing but sampled drums through the filter. Especially with some of the random structures or divisions, this can dirt up or scatter the drums nicely. Let's expand that patch a bit. Here's the same setup, but an oscillator is sent to the detect input. This gives you control over the grain rate and can lead to all sorts of tonal deformation and bit crusher like sounds. A copy of the audio from the drums is sent to an envelope follower and that envelope is used to modulate the frequency of the oscillator to add some dynamics. The multimode filter output is used clean and the granular filter output is sent to a panner. The panner is modulated with the Sync TV sequence to create a stereo spread. I spent quite some time with Cranity, but I feel like there's more to explore and I'm quite curious to see what other people will do with this module. If you'd like to learn more, you can browse through my modular videos here and as always, smash that like, subscribe and bell button if you want to see more modular content from me. But that's it for now, thanks for watching and see you next time.